Hi everybody, welcome to my video. I begin. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to help me as I record the words of your mother and our mother. Please dip every word I speak on her behalf in your precious blood so that they reach the hearts and minds of all those people you wish to communicate with. I ask this of the Father in your holy and precious name, my Lord. Amen. Um, here is a wonderful message from our Blessed Mother Mary. Um, and she speaks about God's mercy. But in doing so, she puts a lot of things in perspective for, for us. Well, hopefully, okay, it did for me. I hope it does for you as well. I hope you are so blessed as well to understand it. Um, my friend speaks, The Virgin Mary, Blessed Mother Mary, appears to me in a vision, in a blue gown, white veil, and a black sash, from her left shoulder across her chest. She is holding the infant Jesus in her arms, who is looking up into her face. She reminds me about the message regarding tears turning into joy. That was a message she gave me on October 29th. She speaks about when one is about to fall beneath the weight of the cross, that the angels are there to help raise it up, as they did with Jesus, who at times felt he could not stand up again because of his weakness and suffering. All this time he drew on the grace of God that he was, and his angels helped. She said that we too can draw upon the grace of God. This is what really sustains us, or we would be crushed beneath the cross of life at times. She said that each man comes to earth with a cross, and it is up to him, through his own will, to make of it either one studded with gems or one covered in the slime and filth which some are covered. She showed me a brief picture of one of these and said that with some their cross is covered in slime and filth and black bilge, some with blood and maggots, etc. They reek of an unholy stench that once cross is taken into eternity with you, that the cross of gems, etc., gives light and is a joy in eternity, that the crosses of filth and maggots, etc., become heavier, and this is what the others are taking around with them. Sometimes we smell the stench with which it reeks when one of them comes near. Uh, my father knew a man that was blessed with the uh, acute sensibility, the spiritual sensibility of being able to smell the aroma of one's sins or grace or state of grace. It was really interesting to hear my father talk about that man. Sometimes he had to leave the room. Sometimes there were people he had to avoid. Sometimes he'd have a very sad or sickening look on his face. And he held all this in, and very few people did he reveal to that he was given this um, uh, this sensibility to be able to, um, you know, sense the sins or the the holiness of people he came in contact with. Very, very unique. Mary was quite graphic in her description of both types of crosses. And now Mary speaks directly to us. God is merciful. These three words are the basis of every denomination who believe in God, regardless of whether they are Christian or otherwise. So long as they believe in God, their faith is founded on this, God's mercy. These words burn bitter memories into Satan's mind, for he was too proud to ask for and to accept God's mercy. Just something that's slightly... Uh, off topic, um, I read that God still was going to allow Satan, right up to the second of Christ's crucifixion on the cross, to redeem himself. Did you know that? Um, Christ would have, of course, punished Satan in some way, uh, but he would have forgiven Satan for all that he had done. That's how merciful our God is. But um, Satan was too proud. 
he would not come back and apologize to God the Father. And uh, there we go. Okay. Um, where are we here? Three precious words. God is merciful. God is merciful. Three very precious words. Believe in His mercy. Rely on His mercy. Ask His mercy. But not with presumption. With humility. With love. In penance. Do not presume that because he is merciful, because he is merciful, one has only to ask for it after deliberately going against his teaching. Listen to this. One cannot deliberately sin, thinking that his mercy will save you after that. No, it is not like this, our Blessed Mother says here. It is not like this. But if you sin out of weakness, out of human frailty, unintentionally, then abandon yourself to his mercy in true repentance. His mercy, his mercy will not be withheld. St. Teresa of the Little Flower of Jesus, she appears all of a sudden in the room and is now standing near Mary with a crucifix in her hand, and blood drips from that crucifix. My friend saw a bright red piece of cloth being wrapped around part of it, but she did not know the meaning of that. Suddenly, I see our Blessed Mother as the Queen of Heaven with a golden crown and the most beautiful garment of many colors, shades of blues and gold, pastel colors blended together, a golden light surrounds her, her, our Holy Queen of Heaven. I have never seen her like this before, and, and stranger yet, she is smiling. And my friend has in brackets here, our Blessed Mother does not often smile. But this is, the, this is only a brief glimpse on two occasions. Then she reverts to blue and white clothing with the child Jesus back in her arms. Now Mother Mary continues to speak with us. The reason I appear with the infant in my arms is that he is the symbol of hope. My black sash that I wear shows that I am the mother of sorrows, but I hold hope in my arms. I speak with you thus, for you will understand. I speak with each that he may understand. That is not to say that one way is any better than another, no. It is only a matter of understanding of who will learn from a particular mystic and what is being told. A difference in rhetoric. The messages, beloved daughter, are usually the same. And my friend speaks, Tell me more about God's mercy. Blessed Mother, and Mary speaks again. I will speak of his threefold mercifulness. First, he is merciful to all who come to him and expect mercy. All who come and ask and accept his mercy because he cannot be otherwise. He is God. Number two, he is the God of mercy. His wisdom calls for mercy. The teachings of His Son are all to show God's mercy. If you have read carefully what is written of Him, as in Jesus Christ, you will see that all is interlaced with God's mercy in some way, and this so few know. Number three, even now with the battle between heaven and hell raging, God is manifesting his mercy to man as he had promised unto himself even before your creation in order to show Satan his mercy can be everlasting, that his mercy is the source from which all creation sprung, that his mercy is for all angel and man and beast and bird and flower and fruit and now and always and evermore the God of mercy 
His Son is a manifestation of His mercy. His mercy took flesh that man may see and believe and communicate with His mercy in form and figure as well as in spirit. His mercy was shaped by the Holy Spirit in the womb of a mortal. In order to proclaim his own greatness, the smallness of Satan, the good fortune of mankind, and the everlasting riches which await those who believe in his mercy. His mercy is the damnation of Satan, for in order to be merciful to man, he must condemn Satan now forever. Sudden, and my friend speaks, suddenly, um, I'm sorry, I've got the wrong page here, please excuse me. Mary continues, These three words, God is merciful, strike terror and cause chagrin and humiliation to the unholy one, for he knows well its full meaning, and he knows that those who trust implicitly in God's mercy cannot be overcome by him, as in Satan. And then, my friend says, there's a pounding that starts upstairs above my head. There's a pounding, bang, bang, bang. And my friend says, Mary, please let that pounding stop. And Mary says, we will override it. That pounding just now is similar to what happens to Satan when people proclaim God's mercy. It is like a great pounding against his mind. The cry should resound all over the earth. God is merciful. This terrific pounding of the words against him will help to drive him back to hell. He will flee from the vicinity where it is filling the air. For him it is a great reminder of all that he has forfeited. Throwing himself upon God's mercy could have saved him. And now my friend says, the pounding has stopped. And Mary continues, enough for now. There will be attempts to confuse you after this. Fear not. Relying upon God's mercy will gain you his strength through grace. And then Mary raises her hand in blessing. I pray to Almighty God that we may benefit from these holy words from our blessed mother Mary. And all blasphemies, especially from Christians, will stop in the name of Almighty God. I pray that the blasphemies by Christian, our own brothers and sisters, will stop against our Blessed Mother Mary, who is the Queen of Heaven and Earth. I ask this in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.